astrophysics for people in a hurry. Let's roll the intro. Chapter 4 Between the Galaxies In the grand tally of cosmic constitutes, galaxies are what typically get counted. Latest estimates shows that the observable universe may contain a hundred billion of them. Bright and beautiful and packed with stars, galaxies decorate the dark void of space like cities across a country at night. But just how void is the void of space? Just because galaxies are in your face and just because they would have us believe that nothing else matters, the universe may nothing less contain hard to detect things between the galaxies. Maybe those things are more interesting or more important to the evolution of the universe than the galaxies themselves. Our own spiral shaped galaxy, the Milky Way, is named for its spilled milk appearance to the unaided eye across Earth's nighttime sky. Indeed, the very word galaxy derives from the Greek galaxians Milky. Our pair of nearest neighbor galaxies, six lakh light years distant, are both small and irregularly shaped. Fidanant Megalians, ships, log, identified these cosmic objects during his famous round-the-world voyage of 1519. In his honor, we call them the large and small megalonic clouds, and they are visible primarily from the southern hemisphere as a pair of cloud-like splotches on the sky, parked beyond the stars. The nearest galaxies larger than our own is 2 million light-years away beyond the stars that trace the constellations Andromeda. This spiral galaxy, historically dubbed the Great Nebula in Andromeda, is a somewhat more massive and luminous twin of the Milky Way. Notice that the name of each system lacks reference to the existence of stars, Milky Way, Megalic Clouds, Andromeda Nebula. All three were named before telescopes were invented, so they could not yet be resolved into their stellar constituencies. As detailed in Chapter 9, without the benefit of telescopes operating in multiple bands of light, we might still declare the space between the galaxies to be empty. Aided by modern detectors and modern theories, we have probed our cosmic countryside and relieved all manners of hard to detect things, dwarf galaxies, runway stars, runway stars that exploded, million degree x-rays emitting gas, dark matter, faint blue galaxies, uncutious gas cloud, super duper high energy charged particles and the mysterious quantum vacuum energy. With a list like that, one could argue that all the fun in the universe happens between the galaxies rather than within them. In any reliably surveyed volume of space, dwarf galaxies outnumber large galaxies by more than 10 to 1. The first essay I ever wrote on the universe in the early 90s was titled The Galaxy and the Seven Dwarfs. Referring to the Milky Way, demuted nearby family. Since then, the tally of local dwarf galaxies has been counted in the dozens. While full-blooded galaxies contain hundreds of billions of stars, dwarf galaxies can have a few as million, which rendered them a hundred thousand times harder to detect. No wonder they are still being discovered in front of our noses. Images of dwarf galaxies that no longer manufacture stars 
tend to look like tiny boring smudges those drop that do not form stars are all irregularly shaped and quite frankly and a sorry looking lot Dwarf galaxies have three things working against their detection. They are small and so are easily passed over when seductive spiral galaxies wire from your attention. They are dim and so are missed in many surveys of galaxies that cut off below pre-specified brightness level and they have a low density of stars within them. So they offer poor contrast about the glow of surrounding light from earth's night time atmosphere and from other sources all this is true but since science drops far out numbers normal galaxies perhaps are definitions of what is normal needed revisions you will find most dwarf galaxies hanging out near bigger galaxies in orbit around them like satellites the two Magellanic clouds are part of the Milky Way's dwarf family, but the lives of satellites galaxies can be quite hazardous. Most computer models of their orbit shows a slow decay that ultimately results in the hapless dwarf getting ripped apart and then eaten by the main galaxy. The Milky Way engaged in at least one act of cannibalism in the last billion years when it consumed a dwarf galaxy whose flayed remains can be seen as a stream of stars orbiting the galactic center beyond the stars of the constellations Sagittarius. The system is called the Sagittarius Dwarf, but should probably have been named Lunch. In the high density environment of clusters, two or more large galaxies routinely collide and leave behind a titanic mess. Spiral structures wrap beyond all recognitions newly indicated blurst of stars forming regions spared from the violent collisions of gas clouds and hundreds of millions of stars to hitter and yawn having fleshly except the gravity of both galaxies some stars reassemble to form blobs that could be called dwarf galaxies other stars remain adrift about 10% of all large galaxies shows evidence of a major gravitational encounter with another large galaxy and that rate may be five times higher among galaxies in clusters. With all this mayhem, how much galactic float SAM permits intergalactic space, especially within clusters? Nobody knows for sure. This measurement is difficult because isolated stars are too dim to detect individually. We must rely on detecting a faint glow produced by the light of all stars combined. In fact, observations of clusters detect just such a glow between the galaxies, suggesting that there may be as many vagabond, homeless stars as there are stars within the galaxies themselves. Adding ammo to the discussion, we have found more than a dozen supernovas that exploit far away from what we presume to be their host galaxies. In ordinary galaxies, for every star that exploit in this way, a hundred thousands to a million do not, so isolated supernovas may betray entire populations of undetected stars. Supernovas are stars that have blown themselves to smithereens and in the process have temporarily increased their luminosity a billion fold, making them visible across the universe. While a dozen homeless supernovas is a relatively small number, many more may await discovery. Since most supernova searches systematically monitor known galaxies and not empty space, there is more to clusters than their consistent galaxies and their vibrant stars. Measurements made with X-ray sensitive telescopes reveal a space filling intra-clusters gas at 10 of million of degrees. 
The gas is so hot that it glows strongly in the X-ray part of the spectrum. The very moment of gas rich galaxies through this medium eventually strips them of their own gas, forcing them to forfeit their capacity to make new stars. That could explain it. But when you calculate the total mass present in this heated gas for most clusters, it exceeds the mass of all galaxies in the clusters by as much as factor of 10. Worse yet, clusters are overrun by dark matter, which happens to contain up to another factor of 10 times the mass of everything else. In other words, if telescope observed mass rather than light, then our cherished galaxies and clusters would appear as insignificant beliefs aimed to giant's spherical pull-up of gravitation force. In the rest of space, outside of clusters, then is a population of galaxies that thrived long ago. As already noted, looking out into a cosmos is analogous to a geologist looking across sedimentary strata where the history of rock formation is laid out in full view. Cosmic distances are so vast that the travel time for light to reach us can be millions or be ever billions of years when the universe was one half its current age. A very blue and very faint species of intermediate size galaxies thrive. We see them. They hail from a long time ago representing galaxies far far away that blue comes from the glow of freshly formed short-lived high mass and high temperature high luminosity stars the galaxies are faint not only because they are distant but because the population of luminous stars within them was thin like a dinosaurs that came and went leaving birds as their only modern descent the faint blue galaxies no longer exist but presumably have a counterpart in today's universe. Did all their stars burn out? Have they become invisible corpus strived throughout the universe? Did they evolve into the familiar dwarf galaxies of today? Or were they all eaten by larger galaxies? We do not know, but their place in this timeline of cosmic history is certain. With all this stuff between the big galaxies, we might expect some of it to obscure overview of what lies beyond. This could be a problem for most of distant objects in the universe, such as quasars. Quasars are superluminous galaxy cores whose light have typically been traveling from billions of years across space between reaching our telescopes as extremely distant source of light. They may idle guinea pigs for the distribution of intervening junk. Sure enough, when you separate quasar light into its component colors, revealing a spectrum, it's riddled with the absorbing presence of intervening gas clouds. Every now, quasar, no matter where on the sky it's found, show features from dozens of isolated hydrogen clouds scattered across time and space. This unique class of intergalactic objects was first identified in 1980s and continues to be an inactive area of astrophysical research. Where did they came from? How much mass do they all contain? Every known quasar reveals their hydrogen features, so we could conclude that the hydrogen clouds are everywhere in the universe, and as expected, the farther the quasar, the more clouds are present in the spectrum. Some of the hydrogen clouds are simply the consequences of our line of sight passing through the gas contained in an ordinary spiral or in regular galaxy. You would, of course, expect at least some quasar to fall behind the light of ordinary galaxies that are too distant to detect. But the rest of the observers are unmistakable as a class of cosmic object. Meanwhile, quasar light commonly passes through regions of space that contain monstrous sources of gravity, which wreak havoc on the quasar's image. These are often hard to detect because they may be a composed of ordinary matter that is simply too dim and distant, or they may be a zone of dark matter, such as what occupies the center and surrounding regions of galaxy clusters. In either case, 
where there is mass of this gravity and there is gravity there is curved face according to einstein general theory of relativity and where space is curved it can be mimic the curvature of an ordinary glass lens and alter the space pathway of light that passes through in the distance quasars and whole galaxies have been lensed by objects that happen to fall along the line of sight to earth's telescope depending on the mass of the lens itself and the geometry of the line of sight element the lensing action can magnify the shot or even split the background's source of light into multiple images just like phone house mirror at agates one of the most distant object in the universe is not a quasar but an ordinary galaxy whose feeble light has been magnified significantly by the action intergalactic telescope to peer where ordinary telescope cannot reach and thus reveal the further holder of the cosmic distance record nobody doesn't like intergalactic space but it can be hazardous to our health if we choose to go there let's ignore the fact that you have freeze to death as your body warms tight to reach equilibrium with 3 degree temperature of the universe and let's ignore the fact that your blood cells would burst while you suffocate from the lack of atmospheric pressure these are ordinary dangers from the department of exotic happenings intergalactic space is regular paced by super duper high energy fast moving charged subatomic particles we call them cosmic rays the highest energy particle among them have a 100 million times the energy that can be generated in the world's largest particle accelerator the origin contains to be mysterious but most of these charged particles are proton the nuclei of hydrogen atoms and are moving at 99.999999% of the speed of light Remarkably these single subatomic particles carry enough energy to knock a golf ball from anywhere on a putting green into the cup perhaps the most exotic happening between the galaxy in the vacuum of space and time is the sheeting ocean of virtual particles undetectable matter of antimatter pairs popping in and out of existence this peculiar prediction of quantum physics has been dubbed the vacuum energy which manifests as an outward pressure acting counter to gravity that thrives in the total absence of matter the accelerating universe dark energy in carted may be driven by the action of this vacuum energy yes intergalactic space is and will forever be where the action is like share and subscribe to our youtube channel and stay tuned for the further videos